Welcome back. Now we're going to go inside the computer and take a look at how to pull the refund report. This report's going to look at how much is being refunded and what the total value is. I'm going to show you how to pull this information, how to organize it, and we'll talk a little bit about how to use this to improve your overall customer satisfaction. Let's get started. All right, now it's time to talk about refunds and refund total value, which we're looking at at the retention and monetization stage. So it's really important to track refunds and refund total value because you need to know how much money you're walking away with at the end of a week period or a month period. Refunds allows you to track exactly how much money you made that you're not going to get to keep. The other reason it's really important to keep an eye on this is because you want to know what products people are refunding. If everyone keeps refunding your flash sale offer, there's a good chance that the offer you're making does not match the way you're selling it. Or that something's broken. You may have some kind of offer where people are unable to download the attachment. When this happens, people don't want the product anymore, you lose the money, and you drive away customers. So obviously refunds are not desirable, but it's really important to know when they happen. We want to make sure we're always clued in to how people are choosing not to use our products. So we're going to go in and look at how to pull this kind of report. I am, of course, looking at Infusionsoft, as I have been throughout this. But you can really do this on any e-commerce platform. Mostly what we want to do is create a payments report. So this one's already set up, but let me just start over. So we want to go in and look at refunds for the period of 1, 1 through 1, 7. And we want to look specifically for refunds. So our total count, 188. Our total value, 23,853. Go back and paste this in. And that's the gist of it. It's very simple. Uh, really quickly, I'm going to fill out the next couple of weeks just so we've got some data to look at in our chart. OK, now we've got some data to work with. So we can come up here and see our refund total chart has dropped. However, if you look at the refund total value, it's been climbing. The reason is this was the end of a refund period for a higher ticket offer. So it's not that surprising that we would actually see the refund total value climb while the refund count dropped. And we would actually call it a generally good thing when the total count of refund drops. So that's one of the reasons that it's so important to understand the context to use your analyst toolkit to sort of dig in and figure out what's going on with your information. If I didn't know that we were refunding a higher ticket offer and that people were trying to get out at the last possible second before they sort of rolled over into paying more, I would get very worried to see count drop but value climb. But generally speaking, this process is not so difficult. You can always dig in and look at what specific products are being refunded. And typically when you see climbing refund value or climbing refund count, you will want to do this. Just figure out what exactly it is that people are choosing to refund. This will help you kind of dig in and sculpt your offers a little bit better or realize maybe one product just is not a good fit for your market anymore and it's probably time to retire it. Simple principle, uh, one of the most important things to look at at this retention and monetization stage, once someone becomes a customer, we want them to stay a customer. So keeping an eye on refunds and ensuring that people are satisfied with what they're purchasing is a great way to make sure that buyers become multi-buyers instead of, oops, I don't want this buyers. So that's it for this video. See you in the next one.